Welcome to the Inverse Matrix Scorecast. Before we take a look at our inverse matrices, let's take a look at something that we know. Let's say we can't divide right here to solve for this question mark. What can we multiply to 2 to get 1? Well, I think you're probably thinking to yourself, well, if I multiply 2 by 1 half, that product should give me 1. And indeed it does. So, if I multiply this 2 by 1 half, I get a true statement. So, let's take a look at if we multiply something the other way. So, so, for example, we want to find something that we can multiply into negative 3 to get 1. Well, just like last time, if we multiply by negative 1 third, that product should give us 1. Well, negative times a negative is going to give us a positive. And 1 third times 3 does give us 1, so that product there will also give us a true statement. Well, the whole purpose of this particular uh, demonstration right here was to get us to realize that these two values are unique and important uh, to each of these particular problems. And what we're going to do today is look at the matrix equivalent to these little pieces right here. Now again, matrices don't have division, so it's, uh, it's something that we need to multiply by here to get this 1. Now let's say we have some matrix A, and we want to multiply this matrix by something to give us the matrix equivalent of 1, which is the identity matrix. And this is the purpose of uh, today's corncast. What can we multiply to A to give us the identity? So what we're going to do in the example 1 here is we're actually going to find the inverse of this matrix right here. Well, we need to multiply this matrix by something to give us the identity matrix. Now, since we need to get a 2 by 2 matrix and we have a 2 by 2, then this something has to be a 2 by 2 matrix. And so again, our goal is to find what this matrix is. And since it's a 2 by 2, we're going to need to find four things. Now, there are lots of ways to do this, but one of the things that I like to do is if I, those are my unknowns, I'm just going to go ahead and use variables for that. So I'm going to use the same process that I used in my identity matrix uh, corncast, that if I have four unknowns, let's just make four variables and uh, use our knowledge of matrix equations and regular systems of equations to find A, B, C, and D. Continuing with the example 1, we now need to multiply this 2 by 2 matrix to this 2 by 2 matrix. And since if we multiply a 2 by 2 times a 2 by 2, our resulting matrix will also be a 2 by 2 matrix. And so our goal is to find these four spots right here. Now I know that this product will result in this identity matrix, assuming I do everything correctly. And uh, again, since I'm multiplying my 2 by 2 times a 2 by 2, that means I need to multiply using my uh, rows and columns. So I'm going to multiply my rows times my columns. So to find the entry for row and column 1, I need to multiply row and column 1. So 2 times A is 2A. 1 times C is 1C, and uh, matrix multiplication means I need to add my products. Shifting my attention to row 1, column 2. I know 2 times B is 2B. 1 times D is 1D, and I need to add those up. So now to find row 2, column 1, I need to bring my attention to row 2, column 1. So 4 times A is 4A, 3 times C is 3C, again I need to add them up, and lastly row 2, column 2, 4 times B is 4B, 3 times D is 3D, and I need to add those up. So now using what I know about uh, my matrix equalities, I now have a 2 by 2 matrix to a 2 by 2 matrix. And I'm going to use the process that I used in my identity matrix uh, corncast um, to find my A, B, C, and D. So now I know that uh, these matrices are equal. So I know that row 1, column 1 has to equal row 1, column 1. So 2A 
plus C has to equal 1. I know row 2 column, or excuse me, row 1 column 2 has to equal row 1 column 2. So 2B plus D has to equal 0. Row 2 column 1 has to equal row 2 column 1. So 4A plus 3C has to equal 0. And lastly, row 2 column 2 has to equal row 2 column 2. So 4B plus 3D has to equal 1. So now what I have here is a situation where I, if I look straight down the middle here, on the left 2, I have two equations with the same two unknowns, so A and C. And on the right one, I have two equations with two unknowns, so B and D in this case. So when I solve this system of equations, I'm going to get A and C. And when I solve this system, I'm going to get B and D. And when I find those, I will have my new matrix. Okay. Um, I'm going to use elimination because everything's lined up. And I know that if I multiply the top uh, equation by negative 2, I will get the opposite for my A. So that's going to give me negative 4A. Negative 2 times C is negative 2C. And negative 2 times 1 is going to give me negative 2. Old school, add these up. That addition is going to eliminate the A's. 3C minus 2C is going to give me C. And 0 minus 2 is going to give me negative 2. So there's one of my answers. Substitute that in, I'm thinking the top equation. So 2a plus a negative 2 is going to equal 1. I'm going to go ahead and add a 2 to both sides. So 2a is going to equal 3. Divide both sides by 2. And a is going to equal 3 halves. And so I've now found two of my four unknowns. Just like in my other example, I'm going to go ahead and eliminate the b's right here. Because if I multiply the top one by negative 2, I will get my opposites. Negative 2 times d is negative 2d. And negative 2 times 0 is going to give me 0. Old school add. d's eliminate. 3d minus 2d is d. And 1 plus 0 is 1. So there's my three of my four unknowns. Plug this, uh, substitute this into the top equation. So 2b plus 1 is going to equal 0. Subtract a 1 from both sides. I get 2b is equal to negative 1. Divide both sides by 2. And b is going to equal negative 1 half. So I've now used my systems of equations to find my four unknowns. a, c, d, and lastly, b. Now that I have those four unknowns, now I can just substitute those in, and now I have my matrix. So I have my matrix 2, 1, 4, 3. Multiply to my new matrix, which I just found. Well, A is 3 halves. B is negative 1 half. And that looks kind of like a 4. C is negative 2. And D is 1. So now that matrix, if I did all my math um, correctly, should equal the identity matrix when I multiply it out. So that matrix times my new matrix, which I call the inverse, if I did everything right, should give me my true statement. And that's the point of today's corncast, to find this matrix right here. Now let's take a second and talk a little bit about terminology. When one is asked to find the inverse of this matrix right here, chances are they're going to use uh, this notation right here. They're going to give us our matrix. And then what they're going to do in this upper right corner right up here, they're going to put a little negative 1. And this is telling the mathematics community that we're trying to find the inverse of this matrix. Well, this matrix with the inverse right there is going to equal my 3 halves, my negative 1 half, my negative 2, and my 1 matrix right there. So please make take a special note of this, uh, that we use this terminology when we're trying to represent an inverse matrix. OK, example two. What is an inverse matrix good for? Well, what we're going to do here is just demonstrate what it's good for. If I take a matrix, multiply it by its inverse, what should happen is I should get the identity. Now I'm going to use technology to demonstrate this. 
in my graphing utility, I've typed in our matrix, and I've also typed in our what we found to be our inverse right here. If when I hit enter, I should get the identity matrix. And sure enough, when I did hit enter, I did get the 1, 0, 0, 1 matrix right there. So indeed, that does give me a what it's supposed to. So this product does give me my identity matrix. And that's good, because that's what I sought out to do. All right, well, let's see if it works the other way. Let's take our inverse matrix and multiply it by our matrix and see what we get. And again, I'm going to go ahead and let technology help me out with that. So again, I typed in my inverse matrix, multiplied it by my original matrix, and when I hit enter, I should get the identity matrix. And indeed, I get my 1, 0, 0, 1 matrix right here. So that's good. So it did what it was supposed to. I take my matrix, multiply it by the inverse, and I do get what I wanted to, the identity matrix. Now finally, we can talk about what we sought out to. We now have a way of finding something to multiply to a matrix to get our identity. So please take a second and jot this uh, down. We have a matrix. If we multiply it to its inverse, and again, I know it's its inverse because of this uh, little negative 1 in the upper right, I know that that product will result in the identity matrix. And I also know that if I take the um, inverse of my matrix and I multiply it to my matrix, I'm also going to get the identity. So please take a second and jot down this uh, very important uh, concept, and we're going to be using this um, here in the future. Thank you for watching.